Yeah, morning everybody. Um, following from yesterday's video um, regarding a brake caliper. Uh, we said we were going to do the rear brake shoes, or have a look at the rear brake shoes, but as you saw in the last video, we've, we've run out of daylight and time. So we're going to carry on this morning, take the rear wheels off, have a look and see what the, uh, see what the brake shoes are doing. I do suspect that the, the linings have probably come away from the, the actual brake shoe itself, which is what they normally do. And then what they tend to do is when they break off the brake shoe, the lining then slips around inside on top of the other one and locks the wheel, which is exactly what we had. So, um, yeah, we'll crack on with that and uh, we'll just cut in and cut out as, as we're going along. Morning, everybody. Um, as you can see at the back of my V70 today, just going to remove the wheels to have a look at my brake shoes and see if we can do anything with them. So, um, yeah, I'll take the wheels off and then we'll show you guys what we can see. Just as a point to note everybody, we're trying out some new uh, microphones to go for the videos today. As you might <laughs> you might see, as you can notice, Aiden's one is there and my one is, is here. So um, it seems to be quite effective, but uh, we'll see what comes out later in the video. And then, uh, yeah, if they're any good, we'll carry on with them. If not, we revert back to just the phone speaker. So we'll good see how we get on. Good to try these things. Yeah, got to try them out. See where, see where you can go. All right, do you want to take the other wheel off? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we do as we go along. Yeah. Right. We'll keep you going for the minute anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right, ready? Yeah, go for it. Might need to crack that one. We'll crack it. Ready? Go. Right, so, always one thing I like to do personally is I like to keep the wheels each side of the car so they go back in the same side. So For example, this is the driver side, so therefore I will place the wheel on the driver side. Yeah, so <laughs> which one goes which way, which way. Right. It's always good to put things back where they come from. Yeah, definitely going to need a set of discs on that, mate, and Chef Limo T. So, but yeah, ooh, doesn't look too bad under there, to be honest. No. The previous but, uh, owner was an uh, elderly gentleman, and the car didn't really do too many miles, so it's no. not had a hard life as such, but he wasn't really into his cars, so no. he wasn't really aware of condition. So what we've got to do now, we're going to have to remove, take the two bolts out of your brake calipers both sides, drop them down or hang them off to one side, um, and then get the disc off, undo that with a 10 mil, and then um, have a look and see what brake shoes we ain't got left. <laughs> <laughs> so is the handbrake on? It is indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. do you want to crack it off then? There you go. Because, yeah. Get me stall. Got a height disadvantage. Right, so what we've got to do is undo that one, undo that one, pull this away, undo the 10 mil, uh, the little stay on the on on the front of the the uh, the disc, both sides, and then we can get the the actual disc off and then have a look at the brake shoes. So I'll go and get the tools to go and do that in a sec. Yeah, 
don't know that I've been there for quite a while, to be honest. Right, what we're doing, we've done one side. Uh, we're just going to give these a quick error because they're so rusted up, got surface rust on them. You can't actually get a proper proper fit of the socket to go on there. So it's always best to, like we did with the front caliper, give them a bit of a clean up and then you probably have to find that the socket will fit better. It's always worth just giving it a scrub over because if you think the socket's not going to go on and then get a bigger size socket, you might end up rounding the corners off and then you end up in more trouble than you've already got. So it's always worth giving it a bit of a scrub. And then uh, even if you have to tap the socket on, it's a nice tight fit. It's better than having a loose fitting socket that's going to round your corners off. Because we don't really want to be rounding off the bolts that go inside these brake calipers. Because that means angle grinder out and then we've got to get the rest of the bolt out once we took the top off. So at some point, things are going to have to come out anyway to do um, pads and disc change and shoe change like we're doing now. So it's always best to give it a scrub over. And then when you get them off, you can give it a, give them a proper scrub up so they fit all nice nice and neat when I go back. Right at this point, um, off camera, I just had to tap this socket on with a hammer. Um, so it is a tight fit um, because like the, because of the surface rust on top of the bolt head. Uh, like I was explaining just a minute ago, it's better to have a tight fit rather than a loose fit. So once we crack this off, we can turn, we can um, clean them up a bit and have a, get the proper socket fitting on there properly so it should go back all right so that's what i've done with this one i've had to tap this one on so we can try and break them off like that just like that rattle that off and i'm probably gonna have to do it to the top one because that probably ain't gonna go straight on no i can feel it starting to bite but that's gonna want tapping on so just like that it's always best to tap the socket on instead of having the socket on the ratchet and tapping the ratchet with the socket because you could end up um, damaging your ratchet um, instead of the socket. The socket is easier to replace than it is the ratchet. So it's always best to tap the socket on. If you damage the socket, it's just a socket. It's easier to go and get. It's better than replacing the ratchet. Right, I shall try and crack this one off. Get that one in there. Yeah, I can hear that crack then, so it's just broken it off. That's it. Actually, in fact, that's come off quite nice, that, to be honest with you. And I might just uh, spin that off with a gun, actually, as it goes. Yeah. Oh, actually, they're, they're pretty all right, actually. Are you ready? Right, I'm just going to crack off the, the peg. Basically, if you didn't know what that bit is actually for, if you look at the back of your alloy wheel, or whichever wheel you take off, that is like a locator, so the wheel goes back on exactly the same place that it came off of. Because if you look on the back of a wheel, you won't be able to get that in all the segments that go around the wheel. You're going to have one that's empty, where that fits in. So the wheel goes back on exactly where it came off, basically. That's a little bit... A little bit greasy, but I'm not complaining because the amount of times I've been here when someone hasn't done the job properly. Yeah, so it's always good to grease it back up when you put it back. So when you come there next time, you, uh, you'll you be able to remove it easily. And um, as Chris was right. saying... Right, that, um, that pin that I just showed you will go in there. So that when you put the wheel back on to that disc, that pin locates in there. You won't be able to put this wheel on any other way around until that pin is in there. Because these will stop it from going in. If I get back to the train, I can show you exactly what I mean. So imagine that's on your disc. 
that fits in there like that. So when you put the wheel on, that fits in there. It's like a locator. So if that wasn't located on that one properly, that wheel is not going to fit on because it can't. So that locator, that this little peg, fits in this section here. So if you notice all the rest of the sections, we've all got pins in which are on the back of the alloy. So that's what that bit's for, just in case you didn't know. All right, what we do is probably because the, the pads are going to be quite tight on the disc, um, I'm just going to tap that off like that. And carefully, very carefully, just push that aside because you've got a brake, a brake pipe there which you don't want to start bending. It's all right just to hang it on. It basically normally just hangs on the top of that spring there like that. Then you can get the disc off then. So we'll have a quick look, see what the disc, what's happening inside here. And there we go. And there is our culprit. There we go, you see? It's exactly what I said. The brake linings come away from the brake shoe like, like that. Because they deteriorate, because because these handbrakes aren't, um, uh, they don't stop the car in motion. They're only a, they're only a holding handbrake. So basically, they're a parking handbrake. Really, they don't actually operate with the foot brake um, in any way, shape, or form. It basically is just a handbrake, and it's exactly what it is. It's, a, it's a parking brake. So because they don't get used like a conventional brake when you put your foot on the brake, like a brake pad, what they tend to do is deteriorate inside there, and this will. Oh, I think they're just glued on to be honest. I think it all comes unstuck. What sends the weapon is that will slide round and that will end up on this shoe here, like that. So that will slide round like that. So that'll break away like that, slide round, go right away round and lock, get itself jammed up inside there on the back of the next shoe, which in turn will then lock it to the inside. Of the disc which basically is like putting the handbrake on and you can't go nowhere because it's it's basically it's double-sided itself basically and it is it's slid on top of that one so it's like you've got an extra thick brake shoe that side um that's why we had lock wheel the only way to do that if that does happen is if you're moving forward and you get a lock wheel is to put the put the vehicle in reverse make sure there's nothing behind you and give it a give it a bit of bloop going backwards that should free that background and then hopefully you should be able to go carry on going forward but obviously like what we're doing you've got to get it done so um but that's that's this is what happens anyway that is exactly what i thought would be happening here as you can see there's absolutely nothing left all we've got is just metal plate there so that they are completely shot they ain't they're scrap Right, as you can see down here, we have got a new set of pads, which come out of my stock, once again, that Aiden's going to replace. <laughs> um, I normally keep stuff like this on the shelf, because stuff like this, so and then you can use them and then buy them back um, at a more opportune time, um, and then replace them. But the thing to do is, I think there's two, there's two sizes, yeah, there's a bigger size and a smaller size. So just to make sure that when you're buying these, to make sure you put your proper details of your car in, uh, because I think there's, there's bigger ones and there's slightly smaller ones. If you get the bigger ones, um, although they might fit and think they're the right ones, uh, they won't operate properly and because you won't be able to adjust them because they'll be that much bigger. So when you go to put the caliper on, um, even though you're trying to adjust it back to take up with the new uh, shoe, um, it's never ever going to fit because they're going to be too big for the the size of the caliper that's going to go on there. Yeah, or if you get if you've got the bigger ones and you get the smaller ones, um, you're going to adjust it right the way up just to try and get them to halfway hold the car, and it's never going to work properly. So you've definitely got to make sure you get the right shoes for the right model, be it whether it's a turbo model, non-turbo model, um, two liter, two point four, two point three, whatever. So um, it's one thing you must do is make sure you get the right shoes for the right car. Great. All right, what we do is we get this, get these off, pull them out of the 
they've got retainers, one there and one there. This side, it just keeps the shoes from coming forward and it keeps them all in line, basically. Once you get them out from inside there, that then becomes all nice and free. Uh, you can pull the bottom ones off and then we go and get the screwdriver. Right, yeah, just get me a screwdriver. Uh, get underneath there, just hook them out. Basically, we don't want them anymore. Hook them out. There's another spring up here in there. And once these come off from here, that spring will come off nice and easy. It's always putting it back. That's the, that's the git, basically. Because <coughs> You have to stretch the spring out, so. Let's just get this off here. You do a bit of clean up in here as well, to be honest. Yeah. Right, what we've done, we've stretched the spring, got that in between the two brake shoes, so that's dropped down. That then lets the spring pressure off the spring, so I've unhooked them. So I'll put them in my little box to keep them because I don't want to lose them. And you can pull the, the pads off like that, get hold of this spring at the bottom. Let's get that at the bottom there. Get that one off and get that one off. Doesn't matter how they come off because it's uh, surplus to requirements now. Come around. That's it. That's the easy part, getting them off. <laughs> look, there's no linings left in there whatsoever. Look, completely gone, look. Safe to say they are unusable. Yeah, there you go. I just want to show them the new and the old. There you go, it should look something like that. Completely different, look. Look how much linings on here, so. Unbelievable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to line up and make sure we've got the right shoe. We think we have anyway. Yeah, it's virtually slightly a little bit of difference there, but all that's all completely the same there. Look. That the same. I mean, that's the same as that one. Okay, we got that right there. That's the same as that bit. Still got the same hole there for the spring. That one there, that one for the bottom spring. That sits in the bottom holder. Hmm. Right, as you can see, new shoes are on. That's the adjuster. Uh, the springs wasn't too bad actually as it goes. I normally have a bit of a nightmare time with these with these um putting these shoes on. It's that's normally it's, it's normally this bottom spring. I'm trying to keep that spring on one side while you connect it to the other side and get it in that seated in there and seated in there properly. Um so the art of actually doing one of these handbrakes is actually getting these two shoes level. So when the disc goes back over it, these are actually level. Um, what I normally end up doing is putting the disc on and then um, tightening up um, until the wheel stops and then taking it back a, a couple of turns and then tapping all around the outside of the disc to try and tap them all level because um, sometimes I don't know if you've noticed it if you've got a Volvo sometimes the handbrake will lock going forwards and let the car roll backwards which means is that's not lined up 
with that side. Or if it locks it going backwards and it rolls forward with your handbrake on, that side's not lined up with that side. So these two sides have to be exactly equal inside that, inside the hub of that disc. And that's why you get the rolling forward or the rolling backwards. Um, because these are not lined up um, exactly um, opposite each other. Um, so you get one side operating, stopping either going forward or backwards. And then um, that's the reason. So it normally takes me a little bit of time to try and tap around, a bit of adjusting, tap around again, make sure they don't go backwards or go, or go forwards. If it does go backwards or forwards, I take it back off. I give these a little tap up or down or round anything like that see how they move like that you know it's, it's all movable stuff because it's all on springs so until you get that on it and start trying to um straighten it all up and um, it's a bit of a hit and miss it takes a little bit of time it's not really a quick job i wouldn't have, well it's not really a quick job <laughs> even though it's supposed to be a quick job but it's not because as i say you get either rolling forward or rolling backwards but we'll um We'll get the disc on it and um, just as a point to note as well i don't know if people have noticed it before that hole there that hole is your adjuster for your rear brake shoes so when this disc goes on that hole there i normally stick a torch so i can see this little cog stick a hole in there uh stick a torch in there through that hole so I can see the cog and then I wind it forwards or backwards, whichever way it's got to go. Generally what I tend to do, I tend to put a mark at the top. So you keep that in line, follow that line up. I tend to put a little saw mark just in there, which I'm going to do in a minute. So you know where that is lined up and I will put a little mark on there. So when that goes on there like that, you've got a little mark on there. So you know that hole lines up with that and you're virtually in line with that just makes it easier to locate instead of going running around going is it back a bit forward a bit just makes it easier just makes life easier right uh like i said before i've marked the top of the disc there with just a little hacksaw mark there a little mark there and a little saw mark there um there's no point in really putting any you can do a little tip X mark there if you want to, if you don't really want to mark that with a... Once it goes all like this, it's got surface rust and stuff on it, um, you're going to lose that little tip X mark anyway. So that'll always be there. Um, so that's in line with that. That's in line with that. Them two are in line. And then when the disc goes on, that will line up with the top of that. Then I know I'm virtually, my adjustment hole, virtually in line with the adjuster so at this point i'm going to put the disc back on onto the wheel i'm going to put the peg back in in there and screws into there that then will keep that tight on there and so that will be located and it shouldn't have to come off so as well, i put that on there now where's the where's the peg hole around there like that so we put that on there, put the peg hole, put the peg in. Ten mil spanner, wherever it may be, there it is. This doesn't need to go up tight anyway. If you're doing this up, it doesn't need to go up really tight to be honest. It's not going to go anywhere because you've got all the wheel nuts holding this on anyway it's just a locator just makes life a little bit easier that's all <sighs> right then like i said before as you can see you can see that line will line up with that that's obviously lined up with that with that i'll get my torch just have a quick look inside wherever that may be <sighs> Right. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yep. 
You're spot on. Yep. Right, as you can see, we've now got the disc on. Um, I've adjusted the shoes up through the adjustment hole through there uh, by winding it up with a screwdriver like that. Um, we have tried the, we have tried just tried the handbrake. It goes up two clicks with a slight movement, three clicks locks it backwards and forwards. So at the moment, this side seems okay. Generally, what I do is get a hammer like that. It's got like a wood base to it. You can so. If you're going to renew handbrake cable, uh, you've got to. If you're renewing one for one side, if it's if you need the cable, uh, there are two separate cables, so you can either re replace the pair of them or do it singly. Um, so you can actually adjust the shoes, like what I've just done here, separately. You don't need to set the whole set up and do the whole lot together. You can do them independently because they're like I say, they're two separate cables, one for this side one for that side, and the cables are completely separate. And when I lower the car, I'm gonna check the uh, wheel nuts with the wheel brace, because um, never always go by your gun or airline, whatever you use, use. Always make sure it's hand tight yourself. So you can just add that bit of reassurance that it is actually done correctly. But um, thank you very much for watching the video. Hope to see you in the next video. Uh, like, share and uh, stay tuned. Thank you.